Hello, everyone, and welcome to, to this week's episode of NetApp On Air. As always, I am your host, Nick Howell. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it, and I am, in a very personal way, in a selfish way, very excited about uh, today's episode and our guest today because I think this is going to be one of the more fun episodes, uh, especially for the, the true geeks out there. Uh, because it's going to talk about all kinds of good stuff. Today we're going to be talking about some open source projects known as Harvest and NA Box. And we have a couple of special guests that are going to be joining us today to go over those. Uh, but first got to do a little bit of housekeeping. Are you in Discord? You should be. You should be in the official NetApp Discord because that is the place to be. Uh, it's one of the new community pieces that we've added over the last year or two that has thousands of members in there, hundred, uh, over 100 members of executive technical and support staff are in there to answer all of your questions field any concerns that you might have uh there's people all around the world uh, from all regions so come join us discord.gg slash netapp or very easy netappdiscord.com is the easiest way to do that follow us on all the social media stuff make sure you subscribe here on youtube and have your notifications turned on because that's the way you get updated and a shout out to everybody watching over on linkedin today for the very first time we are now multi-streaming into linkedin so uh, hello to everyone watching uh, from LinkedIn. I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, make sure you subscribe and follow along uh, here on LinkedIn or on YouTube or we're even on Twitch. Twitch, I didn't forget about you. We see you over there. Thank you guys for joining us there as well. And shout out to everybody watching in Discord. I see you in there in the channel watching along with us. All right. Enough getting along with that. So you guys know at this point that you can see it behind me. All the blinky lights are going. You, I've been building Data Center Dudes Data Center as a side project to show you guys some demonstrations on how things can move around, how to set things up, how to move them to the cloud, all of kinds of stuff. Well, one of the things that I haven't really talked about yet is my absolute obsession with dashboards. I absolutely love dashboards. Um, I come from a world where management and knocks were a, were a thing, real thing, an everyday thing. You had to have that going. And I love looking at different dashboards for different things, whether it's the one that's in System Manager, whether it's the one that I have for media management or my own personal data management type stuff that I have. Um, we're bringing in Harvest today to talk about the, the dashboard that it can create uh, for all of your ONTAP goodness. Now, to kick things off, I want to introduce you to a couple of wonderful gentlemen. Uh, first up... Let's bring on to the stream Mr. Chris Grindstaff, who just had a Chrome crash. I hope he makes it for the rest of the show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Chris, crossed. how you doing, man? Welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. I'm um, doing well. Um, ho hopefully uh, things stay up. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it'll be fine it, either way. Uh, I could talk my head off my to my I could talk to myself. It, it's fine. <laughs> I'd rather talk to you guys. But um, the so tell me about Harvest. Uh, what is the background on Harvest, and where does that really? How did that, what's the genesis of that, if you don't mind, given the little bit of the backstory? Yeah, so Har Harvest actually has been around for a number of years. Um, it originally uh, was on the community tool chest. Right. And it was, I think it was about two years ago now that um, I was asked to take it from the, the tool chest, move it to a proper uh, open source um, community and... Uh, at the same time, we wanted to uh, modernize it uh, from the Perl that it was written in um, in, into a, we chose Go um, because that seemed well positioned for the sort of tool that we were trying to build with Harvest. Gotcha. And I mean, the, you know, the, the simple tagline for Harvest is it, it's just a way to take your ONTAP or storage grid metrics um, of which, <laughs> of which, you know, there are many and uh, turn those into an open metrics format so that tools like Prometheus, InfluxDB, Grafana can just consume all the goodness that ONTAP and um, NetApp and Storage Grid are giving you. That, that's it. sort of the simple tagline. Nice. Um, I want to bring one of your partners in crime on now as well, because there's two things here that kind of coexist together and you know, it, it, it's, they live in harmony together. Uh, so I want to bring in I want to bring in Yan. I'm going to try and say Bizul. Uh, Bizul, almost Bizul? there. Okay, yeah, yeah. I just want to be sure. <laughs> we'll uh, back. Yan, uh, so you, I didn't even introduce you guys properly. Um, uh, Chris, you're the team lead. Is that your full time day job, or is this a side hustle you're doing? Uh, this is this has been my full time job for about two years now. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, 
And Yan, you have a bit of a field background as well. Uh, you're based in, based out of uh, Paris. Yep. So what is uh, what is your uh, you say global technology strategist? But what does that really mean? Yeah, nobody knows. <laughs> I, I don't even know. So global technology strategy is like it's like a super SE. It's, it's an SE yeah. for the global accounts. So basically, taking care of the of the account in the FSI industry, uh, from a technical standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you get? So the product that you work on is called NA Box. And how do what is that? And how does it tie into what Chris was just describing with Harvest? Yeah, but back in the days, it was kind of a challenge to get that installed, the whole stack for Harvest uh, back in the days when it was based on on um, on Perl and the uh, the graphite stack to store the metrics and all that. It was kind of a pain in the butt to get that up and running. And it made a lot of sense to have a virtual appliance so that you can just deploy a VM in your vCenter infrastructure and have everything up and running with a graphical UI, a web UI to configure your clusters and you know put your credentials and stuff and have a direct link to Grafana, which came pre-installed to have all your, da your, all your dashboards available. And it stayed that way. It evolved with NetApp Harvest and now it's uh, it's a big project up to date both and uh, fully integrated with a with the latest version of harvest gotcha so is it purpose built for harvest and obviously totally. prometheus and grafana and all of that or there are there other uses for na box outside of the yeah. scope of that I, I guess you could use it if you wanted you could use it to have a pre-built and up and running a stack for prometheus but really it wouldn't make much sense so yeah i, I would say it is purpose built for harvest gotcha okay so how do how do you guys when you position this, I, we have several different products that do monitoring across NetApp, um, whether it's Cloud Insights or we have the on-command suite or you know, we've got Active IQ and NSS. So where do you guys find and position this in the grand scheme of things? Uh, it's like what, what users are you looking for as opposed to ones that would more traditionally use an on-command, an AIQ, uh, uh, a Cloud Insights, something along those lines? Yeah. Uh I'll jump in on that one first, John, and then you can uh, chime in yep. for, you know, I, th I think there, there's sort of three overlapping use cases that we see a lot, Nick. Um, one, one of them is, is customers that already have a rich set of tools or experience of, of already monitoring um, things in their data center. And they're, they're already using um, Prometheus or, or InfluxDB or Grafana. Right. And, and those that don't want yet another tool to have exactly. to install and a yet another thing that they have to maintain. Right? Yeah, that's right. So, so they, they really just want to know, how can I bring all of my ONTAP metrics into my existing infrastructure? And, right. and Harvest is a, is a great way to do that. Um, you know, the, the, the other uh, thing that we hear from customers that's, that's important for some of them is they want a purely on-prem solution. Mm. Um, okay. which, which Harvest is, it, it, we run in a lot of dark sites. Um, and, um, and then finally, I would say the architecture of Harvest is, is such that we, we really scale from monitoring tens of nodes to thousands of nodes across data centers. Um, and, and we, we do that because of the way that we leverage the, uh, time series databases and, the way that we leverage our polars, um, they're, they're very lightweight. That was a big part of us moving from Perl uh, to Go. Gotcha. So I saw you brought some slides with you. You want to pull those up and talk us through those um, sure. uh, real quick? Okay, let me pull that up there. Okay. Yeah, so so we, we covered a lot of this, like what is Harvest? Um, gotcha. Simply. So this is for, is this for ONTAP specifically and storage grid specifically? That's right. Okay. That's right. I did so, see the so, new dashboard you guys uh, posted the other day for the storage grid. That looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. We and that I mean that dashboard is is awesome for a number of reasons. The to me the the biggest reason it's awesome is because that's something that customers requested on GitHub um, probably about a year ago, and we just started iterating in that issue with customers um, going back and forth with nightly builds saying, does this give you what you need? Yes, no. And, and we've made a lot of modifications to that, um, which is an, it, there's no better way to develop um, yeah. because we're only building exactly what customers want. Yeah. Um, Will you actually use this? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. is it not yet or uh, not until I have X, Y, Z sort of response, right? That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. 
So, so, so kind, of, kind of like I was saying, you can see over here on the, in, in the block diagram on the left edge, um, a, a, another sort of strange uh, claim to fame for Harvest is we, we actually monitor seven mode systems. Um, and uh, <laughs> we, we, we have a number of large customers that, uh, that really appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot, a lot of our uh, Believe it or tools. not, there are yes. still quite a few of them it's out, there out there running production yeah. workloads that are doing just fine. <laughs> yes. Hundreds and hundreds of nodes of production workloads. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, we we um, we monitor um, seven modes, C dot, and storage grid. And then you can sort of break that down a bit more. Um, a, a lot of our customers are aware of the ONTAP's Zappy to REST migration. Uh, and impending or currently in progress, I believe. We've made those announcements. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And and. Um, you know, we, we worked hard over the past year to uh, fully move Harvest from Zappy to REST. So um, the way that works today is if Harvest is talking to your cluster and um, it detects that your cluster is on 9.12.1 uh, or later, we'll just automatically switch to REST. You won't Beautiful. even notice. You get the exact same metrics, no changes to the dashboard. Um, everything works. So and it's a lever that gets pulled on deployment uh, of Harvest that detects what ONTAP version you have. Does it prompt you which you want to run if you have an older version? If it's, No. So if you have an older version, we'll default to Zappy. Oh, right? gotcha. And okay. if you have Because REST won't be there. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. So, so basically at runtime, we're sniffing what version of ONTAP you're using, what you're monitoring, and whether or not that version of ONTAP supports REST. And if it does, we'll use it. Gotcha. And I'm assuming um, there's a hybrid solution where both are supported for various systems. That's right. Yep. That's right. Okay. Yep. The the hybrid solution is pretty simple. You can list in, in the harvest configuration file, Zappy or REST, and it will use the first that works. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask the obvious question. Um, other platforms uh, potentially in progress here around E-Series, Centricity, or um, Element OS with the, the SolidFire stack? Yes, that's that's an awesome question, and my answer to that. Uh, ho hopefully, your yeah, everyone can see this. Yeah, yeah. Um, over over on our GitHub page, uh, the way we like to do this is we we have an issue for all of the systems that you just said, and if you're a customer that wants that, come and plus one it or uh, drop us a note, and that's again the way we're judging um, where the most interest is um, as gotcha. we as we develop features. Love that. Also, uh, kind of taking the pulse of the conversations in Discord. Guys, this might surprise you, but the the channel that these guys run uh, is the most active in our in our larger NetApp Discord community. Sure, we see a lot about ONTAP and hardware from time to time, but this one is constantly... You guys are, you guys are killing it, man. It's constantly <laughs> going in there yeah. about with new stuff. Thanks. Yeah, we're... We're, we're spread across, um, the, the Harvest team is pretty small, um, but we're, we're spread across enough time zones that, that we're able to give good coverage on uh, those Discord questions. Yeah, there's always something constantly going on in there. It's, when Drew and I are watching it from the, we, we kind of watch from the view, from the top down, right? It's looking yeah. at, what the hell is going on over there in that Harvest channel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. R R Rahul and uh, Hardik are, are two of my teammates um, yeah. that pitch in a lot on shout out to those guys for all the contribution they're doing in the, right. in the community we really appreciate it yes yes all right so um, where's the where's the right point to sort of transition this to bring in na box to start talking about how you two guys got together and when it made sense to start building a kind of an ova wrapper that would help deploy this larger solution yeah yeah go ahead chris yeah y yeah so, so like what what if we look at this block diagram, yeah. um, what what harvest? If you go if you go to GitHub and download Harvest, you're going to get the the Harvest box here that allows you to talk to uh, these different ONTAP and storage grid systems. Um, but that Harvest box doesn't come with Prometheus or Influx or Grafana. Got it. And and so what NA box does is NA box wraps all that up into a V app, um, and um, someone asked me recently how many of our like how many of our customers are using harvest by itself and how many of them are using harvest with an a box and we have a you know we have a little bit of data on that and it's it's about half of our customers are using an a box so that's okay. that's a substantial number that, yeah. that prefer the convenience of 
this sort of NABOX style VApp deployment model. Um, and I'll, I'll, I think if we have time, Nick, I'll show a demo um, okay. of deploying the harvest block here with Docker Compose, which will also stand up Prometheus and Grafana for you. And, and we, have, we also have a number of customers using that deployment model um, as well as- That would be my preferred way. Um, Cause I was gonna say, I probably fall into the camp that on a day-to-day -day basis wouldn't use in a box cause I've already got an existing Docker uh, instance. Yeah. Uh, I've already got a big Docker Compose, you know, thing. I've I've got my VS Code's all set up. I'm ready to go. I simply copy and paste some lines of code and pull your container, and like I'm good. Yep. Um, it, there's already InfluxDB and um, Grafana's in there. I don't think I have anything on Prometheus yet, so that would be an additional pull. But I mean, like all of that infrastructure exists already, um, so it would be a pretty easy stand-up for me. I can see how people that, well, everything that I just said is foreign language to them. Right. And they just want a simple, uh, they're, but they're comfortable in VMware. And mm -hmm. they can go right click new VM and get all of it de pre deployed and pre configured for them. Yeah, that's really appealing. Yep. Yeah. If you're a nerd, definitely you want to go, you want to go the Docker route, you want to yeah. go the Kubernetes route, even, right? There's a lot of fun that we can have with, uh, with a harvest in the harvest stack. If you want something up and running, low maintenance, definitely Anybox is the way to go. Yeah. Nice. All right. So next steps, once we get it deployed, where do we go from there? Do you, do you have a demo environment that we can kind of drive around in as a sort of a coffee table talking piece? Yeah. Um, show me some dashboards. <laughs> how, how, how about, um, how, how about I show you the demo and as part of that demo, we'll, we'll hit the dashboards. Okay, cool. Um, so, so the, all this demo is the, uh, and yeah, so let's hope, Chrome doesn't crash and let's hope, let's hope the demo <laughs> works. So, um, like I said, I, I'm going to do the, the Docker compose demo. So all of one, of, one of the areas that we've invested a lot in the last year is in our documentation. And, uh, you can see here, this, this link I'm going to open, um, on, on our document site that walks you through all of the steps that I'm going to type over here so that we can stand up this demo. And, and there's a lot of great uh, documentation here that, that we've invested. Oh, beautiful. Um, nice. And, and so I will, um, I'll go to GitHub and download the nightly release. So you, this, is, uh, this was published midnight um, tonight, uh, last night, and we'll wget that. Um, mm. And then once that's down, um, we're going to untar it. And now that we've untarred it, what we want to do is we want to actually set up the harvest YAML file, which will include which clusters we want to monitor. And just for this demo, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to add two on tap clusters and, and I'll, uh, as soon as this is done, like typing, I'll, I'll tell you what this is so that. Right here, the nomenclature that we use in Harvest is you're polling those clusters. So I have a cluster named U2. This is an arbitrary label that I give it. I can put it in whatever data center I want. Um, this is another cluster in the same And are data those center. cluster management IPs or are those specific to a node or an SVM or? Those are, those are the management IPs, yes. Okay. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, when we talk about how customers use Harvest and one of the things that they really appreciate, it's the fact that um, Harvest is, only requires read-only access to your ONTOP cluster. And a, okay. a, a number of our tools don't, they, you know, a number of our tools make small changes. And so uh, the fact that Harvest only requires a read-only user with limited access um, is, is we found in talking with customers another, another big benefit of it. I would. I love that. I can just create a separate user, give it read-only access to things, and not have to care that there's some random service account in there. That, That's right. Yeah. And and love and it. we we actually tell you exactly which permissions you need read-only. Um, that's so for for customers who want the the smallest possible surface area. That's all listed on the the documentation site um, of which ones to add. Uh, so uh, w one one other cool thing that we're that customers don't have yet, this will, this will be in the next version of Harvest. We, we, we have a number of ways, of course, to 
um, authenticate with your cluster. You can see in this particular example, these two clusters don't list a username or password. Hmm. Um, Using all like of a that .creds file or something? Yeah, so, so in this case, it's running a script called get pass um, at, at when it needs to get a password. And uh, this was a request for some of our large customers, this release. Um, they didn't want to, we, we support certificate authentication, certificate authentication, which um, is nice if you want to set up certificates. Um, we also support a secrets file and a number of our customers use that with vault or some other password management. But we, uh, we, ha we had a number of requests uh, recently for this credential script. So it, it makes it a nice demo. Um, all these clusters are going to use the username harvest and then the password will be retrieved at runtime from just executing the script. Gotcha. Um, okay. All of these pullers are going to export to uh, the exporter called Prometheus One, which you can see is defined up here. And this Prometheus exporter um, is going to, uh, you're, you're, by using this configuration, you're telling Harvest, just pick a free port. Um, sure. I don't, don't care what it is, just use this range. So is, and, it, is it scalable in this? In, is that the reason for the range? Yes, that's right. That's right. So, so the, the way it works is when the, and I'll, I'll show you this, but at runtime, what will happen is you will have a single process for this cluster and a single process for this cluster. Um, they're completely independent. Um, they're on their own schedules. They do their own thing. And um, the, what, you, what you may not know, um, Nick, because you're, you use Influx and not Prometheus, and those have different models of push versus pull. But right. Prometheus, Prometheus is a pull model, which means what, what we're specifying here is that the polar for this cluster needs to kick up a web server port so that Prometheus can come and pull it. I got um, you. Okay. And, and that's, that's why we have this little dance up here as we're saying, when you kick up your uh, listen port, pick from this range. Yeah. That makes sense. It yep. absolutely makes sense. So uh, we'll, take that, we'll take that Harvest YAML and we're going to ask Harvest to generate a Docker Compose using that Harvest YAML. And the reason we do that is because that way we'll have a container per polar. Um, and that, like, this is just, the, this is the command you run to do that. Um, it spits out this output and we're just going to run that to bring everything up. Beautiful. Ho hopefully it works. Looks like it's working. Um, now we're going to con confirm that all of those uh, containers are running. We can see here that Grafana was stood up, Prometheus was stood up, and then here are two polars that we configured. Um, and we'll now open the Harvest dashboards. So, Any special uh, networking requirements for those to be able to talk to lifts, uh, cluster lifts, or anything like that? Um, data lifts, I should say. Is it looking at data lifts and throughput and things like that? It is, yeah, yeah. All right. So, so if, if we, like, if I look at the logs for one of those clusters that we just started, you, you can see that it's now collecting. Um, and it, the, the reason I want to show you this is, it's, it's actually using REST because this is a 9.12 cluster. So nice. as, I, as I mentioned before. Um, and the da so the dashboards that, that Harvest ships with, we ship with a lot of dashboards. We, we uh, categorize them into seven mode, C mode, and storage grid. And in C dot alone, you can see there are quite a few. Wow. Um, we, we, I, I should have mentioned we also support uh, FSX with... A number of these dashboards are tagged with FSX, and those that's just saying that those dashboards also work with FSX. Um, and then storage. God, you guys are going to make me get a bigger knock monitor. <laughs> <laughs> right. I love it. Right. So um, because we just stood up this whole system that I just showed you, um, there's not going to be a lot of data uh, yeah. there. So what I'll do is I'll flip over here to my other browser where I have a longer running system, and I can just show you. Um, I can just show you some of the things. This is a new dashboard that we're actually working on for our next release, um, which is next month. And th this this again was a customer request that they wanted sort of a health summary dashboard across all of their clusters. And 
you know, so, so what we're showing here, errors, warnings, and emergency EMS, and then doing a breakdown of, of what those are at a, at a high level. And then if okay. you want, you can drill in um, oh, at wow. the various levels that you see here. Um, some of these don't have data at the moment. Let me see if I can find one that does. Uh, I think there were some network. Yeah, so like network interface, kind of like what you were asking before, these network interfaces are not at the home. Port. Not on their home ports. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So th this is, and, and this data center that you see here, you know, that, that was just that arbitrary tag that we, uh, that we set in the harvest YAML that you saw earlier. Gotcha. And that's kind of like, that's a, these, these dashboards of course, give you a way to select a subset of those, uh, those values you kind of filter down between the different uh, entities that are part of it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So um, let me jump to another, I think another dashboard that a number of folks are excited about in the next release is we've added a lot of monitoring for on taps S3 object storage. Mm. So you get a, you know, same thing you get um, data center cluster SVM bucket up at, up at the top that you can use to drill in. Um, and we give you all of the bucket overview, the, the used use percentage, um, object counts, and whether it's encrypted or not. And then for these particular ones, we're also able to show you um, some performance metrics and some capacity metrics in this case. Um, so there's, there's a huge amount of information um, in, in these dashboards. Aggregate is, a, is another popular one to see how your space is being used. Um, what your uh, efficiency ratios are uh, across time. You know, you you can come here, of course, and and pick a different time range if you want to look at this over a longer period or shorter period of time to drill in on problems. The thing I love about this, just some color commentary, if I can, real quick. Mm -hmm. I've never, I've been, I was a customer in the two thousands. I joined NetApp in twenty eleven. Right. I've I all one of the things that that file of you never gave us really. Uh, back in the seven mode days was some be a beautiful dashboard like this that was mm -hmm. something other than CPU and network. Uh, uh, maybe you'd get a hard drive activity. Right. But, uh, but looking at this going, oh my God, capacity utilization of disk, capacity utilization of snapshots. Uh, what is my, how big is my snap vault destination being cur currently utilized? Like, discrete detailed things like that would be insane. Oh, that's beautiful. Yep. Oh, look at the graphs. I, I, that, <laughs> see, that stuff gets me excited. I literal, literally, look, chill bumps. Uh, I yep. get really excited. So you're seeing throughput that you can drill down into with individual volumes. You're seeing, uh, you can visualize a lot of this stuff so that anyone at a glance can go, that doesn't look right. Let's go investigate. That's right. Versus depending on alerting systems and pager, pager systems to let you know when something goes wrong. Um, I, we never had any of that stuff. And man, I wish I would have. Um, I'm so excited to have built this. I'm so excited to have what you're showing right in front of me right now. It, good news is I am up on 9.12.1 P1, uh, so I can use REST. I can take advantage of all of the stuff. Um, but I, just the stuff that's not CPU, network, and hard drive, and memory, right? The typical standard dashboard you get with just about every app ever. Yep. Seeing it get down to the discrete NetApp levels, like snapshotting, vault, mirrors, all of that stuff, that's the, that excites me. I can't wait to show that off more. Yeah, the, 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 uh, obviously a ton, of, a ton of work goes into building these dashboards. And um, over, I would say over the last two years since we've open sourced this, this is, this is one of the areas that we've invested the most in, both really in adding new dashboards and also in um, validating the dashboards, validating the data, validating all the units, adding unit test to catch all the units matching and that sort of stuff. Because um, we, on, on, the, on the public documentation site, one of, the, one of the areas that has gotten the most attention recently is we actually publish all of the ONTAP metrics that Harvest collects. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal list of metrics and all of those metrics that you see on the right side that are used in the dashboards on the left side, 
we try very hard to make sure that all the units and and everything match and and we're, we've added more and more automation to that um as as we've gotten more experience with it and and we, that's really paying a lot of dividends um yeah so if i set I, up I data center say, dudes dashboard like can i contribute that back to the project somehow that anybody could take and use that Absolutely. Yeah. Cause and, I'm and that weird guy that will sit there for hours and completely customize my own layout and everything. Like we have can. a gallery or a collection that people can, uh, you know, rate my dashboard kind of thing. <laughs> I think that would be like a, a lot store. of fun. Yeah. Yeah. We, I, we, I wanted we, to add one thing is that the metrics are, there's plenty of metrics and you can put that in dashboards, but there's a lot of work that goes as well into interpretation of the metrics and mm. combining them together sometimes to get value. It's not as easy as putting the metrics straight from the database to a graph. Sometimes it, it gets more complicated than that. And the Harvest team did a great job with this. Yeah, well, to your point, uh, a comment came in here from Arthur uh, over on Twitch. Thank you for that. It said, the value for me, Harvest gives us historic graphs. What volume was pulling a lot of data and causing right latencies for others? Like that sort of stuff is invaluable for for any sort of admin. Thank you, Arthur, for the for the comment there. Um, I think that's that kind of stuff. People forsake a lot of times, but when you come in first thing in the morning, you're having a sip of coffee and you're looking through the logs, and you're trying to see, oh wow, something happened crazy at two thirty in the morning. Let me dig into that. Having that historical graph data to skim back through real quick and go and see that IO spike when the backups kicked off or whatever it might be. That was always a the thing, right? I, I to to Arthur's point, I think having those historical graphs is is fantastic. Not just a, a list of log data. Yeah, yeah, I agreed. What, one yeah, of the... you were saying something. I jumped in on you there. I apologize. What were you uh, going for? No, no. I, I uh, oh, you're talking to Chris, or no? I was just mentioning the fact that you know there's a lot of work to work with the actual metrics, what they mean, and make meaningful dashboards out of this. It's easy to put the metrics out there and tell the, the user or the customer, well, you've got the information in there, right? But you, it has to be actionable. It has to mean something. And it crafting the dashboards is a lot of work. And and these guys, they did a great job with this. Yeah. Yeah, Corey. And, and usually from so customers' much. feedback, right? Yeah, yeah, and you, we're hearing it uh, today, even on the show. Uh, and, and Drew and I kind of watch it with binoculars from the top, from Discord, uh, just seeing you guys and all of the love and praise that you get. And I think one of the most endearing things that I can say about you guys is that you have customers that are coming in, or users, I should say, that are coming in and constantly asking questions and showing a level of interest in something to a level that I haven't seen in a long time. So, I mean, kudos for building the community around it and kudos for building the, the products themselves because it's fantastic and you guys are really killing it. Um, Thank you. Yen, what, where do we, we... We described in a box earlier, but can you... There was the genesis... Where did you get to the point where it's like, okay, I'm tired of deploying all these components on my own. Yep. How do I... Go, how, how did you go about starting in a box as a kind of a add-on on top of yeah. uh, the Harvest stack? Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of the users actually, well, they loved that the, the dashboards, just like you, right? They, they love to see that stuff, and they were like, okay, I want I want to have that in my data center, but I don't have either the expertise, or I don't have the time, or I don't want to spend a team taking care of that, and I want I just want to get it up and running. I don't want to care about it. I don't have, I don't want to have someone maintaining the metrics and maintaining the change the configuration and all that. It's a you saw that it's yeah. YAML files to edit and stuff. So, I shouldn't need three full-time employees to stand up a monitoring system. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, they just want the good stuff, right? Yeah. So there, there is definitely a need. Like Chris said, half of the installation are, are being deployed using Anybox, which is when I saw that number, I was like, huh, well, they might be onto something here. So uh, so it's it's actually used and, and people, they just want to, they're used to virtual appliance, right? It talks to them. It's It's... A, common parting to to deploy virtual appliance especially in a, in a vCenter environment and uh that's uh how i've started working on that you know uh like i said earlier you know graphite and all that stuff it was much more complicated but it still make a lot of sense today especially in a world where 
you're either so you're either a um, a a user that likes web interface, right? You go on the web interface. I, I can show you. Uh, well, if you if you switch on that view, I can show you real quick how it looks like. Um, and there you go. So once you once you've deployed any in your uh, in your VSphere environment, you boot it up, and after you know a couple of minutes, you get that uh, you get that interface. So you just log in with the standard credential, and that's pretty much a simple dashboards, right? That has nothing to do with with Grafana. Grafana is is available from up here, but the value is especially on that stuff, right? The storage system that could, you could just pull the panel here, put your credentials, save, and done. That's it. It's uh, from that moment on the uh, the collection of the metrics uh, starts, and then you've got some. You've Does got it some just hand off that the the duties and responsibilities to the harvest installation? Yeah. After that, it actually configures what Chris was showing earlier. So it, it gotcha. puts up the, uh, the the right YAML files with the right parameters and all that, and it and it pops the, it, it runs the instance, the Polar instance, and it starts uh, graphing stuff into Prometheus and then uh, and then go to Grafana, and uh, and then you get you get some some perks on the uh, you know in some enterprise environment you want a uh, SSL configuration for the web interface, you want Active Directory authentication for Grafana. So you don't have to go into Grafana configuration file. You put your LDAP your support. Stuff I hear you. You guys are going well. in, aren't yeah. you? <laughs> yeah, a lot All of enterprise. Right. And again, that came from a user's request, right? Yeah. So we're basically listening to listening to people that you know chime in on on Discord and stuff, and say, look, I, I really need that stuff. Otherwise, you know, my IT department or you know stuff like that, they they won't let me in. Um, and then you get easy upgrades as well, right? You just Put the uh, whatever the newest version of Harvest is right there. Click install, and off you go. Um, that's, so that's really convenient simplicity. And one thing I wanted to add is that you have a full set of everything that's done in the web interface. You can use APIs to do the same thing. So it actually also makes a lot of sense in the DevOps environment where you want to automate adding, removing controllers. Uh, tweaking the dashboards and and run actions uh, and and automate a lot of things, uh, and that's because I wanted to be a uh, I wanted Anybox to be an API first type type of project. I'm sitting and here asking myself, why in the world have I not deployed this yet? And obviously, I it's because know, I've been man. busy stand getting everything stood up and configured over there. But now that it is, like I want to I want to deploy this this afternoon and, yep. and let, at least just to have Harvest running in the background to collect start collecting data before I really lose. I don't want to go down the dashboards rabbit hole yet because I don't have that kind of free time right now. But at least to have Harvest sitting back there collecting metrics, right? Yep. Is so that perpetual, user, ongoing, forever, Chris? Or is there any uh, time limit where you cut off? Or is it just collect metrics for as long as you've got it turned on? It, it will collect as long as you turn on. And, and it, uh, we, we actually will continue collecting as you upgrade uh, your version of ONTAP from version to version. Um, wow. We, we actually will have uh, some background jobs that detect when there's an upgrade. And if your upgrade of ONTAP brings in new features, we'll start using those. Wow. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, I need to get that. There's just have the collector up and running for the time being. Yeah. So All right. Yeah, sorry. You were saying I wanted to jump everything. in there. Nope, yep. you got it. No, uh, it's, that's pretty much what it is. So what do you, what do you want to do now, right? You could uh, go the uh, nerd route. Have fun with Docker YAML files and all that stuff, or head over to anybox.org and download the whatever the latest release is, uh, 3.2 right now. Get that installed into vCenter and start playing with uh, it. And of course, join on Discord to uh, you know for feedback and stuff. That's uh, any plans to support other hypervisors? Or is this exclusively VMware uh, for that's now? That's a great one. Yeah, I think so. or something along those. You know, given the open source <laughs> uh, community and things like that, any other. So Anybox runs on Alpine Linux. Uh, it was based on Ubuntu before or Debian before. The problem with that was maintaining and security. And yeah. upgrading those distributions was proven to be, you know, it's kind of hard. It's a one-man job here. So it's just me and myself. So I wanted to strip down the OS as much as possible. And Alpine Linux seemed, seemed like a, a, a good choice. So yeah. the problem with that is that it, 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 it's a little bit tricky to get that running in. Uh, there's a lot of requests to get that up and running in AWS, believe it or not. So people, I believe it. You, yeah, usually the, the, the answer to this is like, what I tell people is, well, you're going the DevOps route and the, and the cloud native route. 
you might want to consider Kubernetes and stuff, right? Yeah. But if you want, if you really want to get that, or just uh, go use ECS and stand the container stack up. Exactly. Know? So there's right. ways to get to make it work in AWS, but it's it's really not that simple. Hyper V, our good friend uh, Justin did the uh, did a uh, did some work of converting the image from VMware to Hyper V. It is possible, not out of the box. And I I thought about integrating integrating that into the pipeline. I learned a lot with that project. Like when I click yeah. the button and commit the code, it builds the virtual appliance, put it, put it up in the website and upgrade the websites and all that stuff. So that, that was a lot of fun to learn the uh, DevOps practice. Um, but I remember uh, was is, it 2014 or 2015, there oh, was this man. tool or a snap-in that we were creating that was converting VMDKs remember to VHDs. That? Yeah. Uh, I believe yeah. that was our good buddy Glenn Sizemore that was doing that. Uh, okay. He's now yeah. running VMC over at AWS, or excuse me, at VMware. Um, the VMware Cloud on AWS solution. So, hi, Glenn. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I look at little things like that. Like, there are – anything's possible at, at this point. It's just I understand you're kind of uh, – as resource-strapped is, is probably the best way to describe that, being a one-man wrecking crew over there. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you, you know, doing, trying to follow – and we have a lot of discussions with Chris, the both teams, the team of one and the team of uh, a handful, working together – and giving a heads up whenever we're doing something that, you know, changing something, uh, work together to make sure that it's implemented on both sides. Uh, and it's been, it's been a great experience, really. Yeah. Awesome. Um, what's the future look like for you guys? In the last 10, 15 minutes of the show here, let's... Uh, I love this but so far, by the way. I'm literally going to... I've got an open kind of creative afternoon blocked off, so I am really looking at going and deploying this and, and playing with it. See, I, mean, I can't fold it into my existing environment. What's the future look like? Uh, for, as much as you can tell, um, obviously we've got uh, ONTAP is going to continue to evolve. Uh, the REST API transition is going to be an interesting one over the next few years. So I'm, I'm definitely looking, have eyes on that specifically, but is there anything that you guys are sort of looking forward to from a roadmap perspective that users have really been in demand for or that you have kind of signed up to, to build? Yeah, I mean, for, from the Harvest point of view, we you know, the, the focusing on, um, new dashboards has been a, a big area of future. Like, um, FSA was, was, a another new sort of on tap yeah. feature that came in that we wanted to, um, be able to monitor and, and give good insight on. Or even and, just harness what on tap is, is collecting with FSA. Like that's I, that's right. I, I think I was talking with, uh, with Baxter. Hi, Jeff Baxter. A year or so ago, we were talking about how do I, how do we take FSA and leverage that that data that's there? Because it's available via the API, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, we can we can pull it. What could we do with that information? Like that would be cool. Yes. That is, so so one one big area is is really bringing in to Harvest more monitoring of on-top features, new features, um, and, and and in some cases old features that we just haven't gotten to yet. Um, there there are a lot of those. Um, and you know, you, you earlier, Nick, you touched on other platforms. Yeah, uh, that that's been another um, area that we have on the roadmap. The elements, centricity. The, uh, yeah, okay, that's right. Um, and and then uh, we, we've we've had a number of uh, requests around sort of deployment models. We we've gotten, you know, that we we've had our containerization effort done for a while. But there's there's a little bit more that we could do to streamline that for Kubernetes, and um, we we plan on and doing some more work there. Um, yeah, Helm chart potentially. For yeah, the, operators. For the stack, yeah. We're talking about oper operators the other day. Yep. Okay. Be fun as well. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Since it is a um, multi-container stack, that's where it starts to get interesting. You kind of have to scale it out sense. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Regarding Anabox, I've been working, well, the, the uh, storage grid addition, being able to uh, add storage grid clusters uh, right in the interface is, is on the, in the, is on the to-do list. Um, and I want to say, there's, there's, we started to do some work on alerting, Chris. Mm -hmm. Want to touch on that? It's an interesting topic, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so one of the, one of the nice things about Prometheus is if you have Prometheus metrics, Prometheus sort of has a rich set of alerts that you can build on top of those uh, metrics. Right. And so, so Harvest today ships with some examples of how you would use 
the metrics that we're collecting from on top in your alert manager or your Prometheus alerting. And uh, there's there certainly have been some more requests for adding more of those. Um, and and the, other, the other big area of alerting that we've invested is in EMS. So oh, wow, I, I didn't really show it, but we have a completely different EMS collector that will um, you know, talk EMS with ONTAP and turn those EMS events into Prometheus alerts so that customers can um, consume and that, that those. Allows you, if people have Prometheus already configured for alerting for various things, it, you, this basically just adds that as a plus one onto that alerting system. That's right. That's brilliant. I love that. That's right. And, and there's, there's, more that, there's more that we can do there. One, one request we've had that's related to that is like audit log. Okay. So monitor the audit log, um, turn those into um, some sort of metric so that you can turn those then into alerts. Um, that's, a, that's another area on our, on our roadmap. Fantastic. Uh, I, I think the more we collect, the more we build dashboards around it, that feels like an obvious progression that eventually people are going to want to start triggering off of that information that we're collecting and displaying uh, and pulling together. Agreed. Cool. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to share with the uh, with the users before we get out of here? Um, the, Any the, other questions, guys? Throw them in the chat. Uh, feel free. We've got a lot of the, people watching right now. If you guys have questions for the guys, we'll throw it up on the screen. Uh, Joe yeah. said he's uh, been using it for five years. Has it been hey, around Joe, for Joe? five years? Yeah. It has. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. yeah. It feels oh, like but, it's only been a couple, three years, maybe. Yeah, op years. open source for two years, but it existed exactly. in the that's the right Perl version before. Go, go Joe. <laughs> yeah, go Joe, man. That's hardcore. I love it. All right. Uh, Corey says he loved that LDAP authentication's in NA box in there. That's fantastic. I, yep, I, I also recognize attack. that right away. Yeah, some enterprise features that are, you know, usually SSL, uh, CA, uh, um, certification authority, uh, SSO, like LDAP, and stuff like that are really for enterprise deployment. It's, there's no way around that. Yeah. Uh, question came in from uh, Juan. Uh, says, so the API works fine with Postman? So I'm guessing this is for any box. Yes, you've got the swagger in there and uh, you can you can just use the swagger or uh, it's all documented on the any box documentation website, uh, how you get the token. There's, it's not really greatly integrated today. You've got to fetch the token that's from the, within the, uh, the SSH connection. You get that one that one time. I'll, I'll build a UI for this, but for now, that's what you've got to go. And that's what you've got to get. And then you can put that in Postman and put your collections and stuff uh, in there. Yeah, Juan, if you have questions about that further or want to talk to Ian directly, uh, come join the Discord. That's where, um, yep. that's where a lot of uh, this conversation and support happens for these open source projects. So come join us, discord.gg slash netapp, and uh, we'll be able to get in there. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead. I, I would say, Nick, circling back to what you mentioned earlier, I, I you know, the one of one of the reasons I believe that we have uh, seen so many people start using Harvest is because of Discord. It's it's because you can talk with the development team and other Harvest customers in real time. Yeah, on, it's access. On, it's on, one on, of the words right. I've been throwing around for the last few years yeah. is access. And and we, and we we see like. 41% of our issues on GitHub are opened by customers. Um, and like, fixed rather quickly. Yeah, well. we're, <laughs> we're, we're, a, we're a nimble, uh, fast team. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. and, and we really do listen and iterate on, on solutions, um, which is, is the best way to develop. Yeah. Yeah. Drew and I and Archibald are already in talks about how to expand the sort of GitHub integration into Discord. Um, it, we just don't want it to turn into a spam monster. Um, right, right. That'd but we, cool. do wanna, we do want to do other things besides Trident and things. We want to bring in the Harvest and NA Box projects as to be you know, inclusive of that. So among other things, um, the, of, of, of how many hundreds of projects, repos we've got out there uh, across all the various places, but... Uh, yeah, Discord's where it's at, guys. Make sure you get in there. Uh, I don't see any more questions coming in, um, so I think we're going to wrap up there. Chris, Yen, thank you so much for, for coming Thanks in. I know, I know it was kind of last minute. We didn't have a lot of time to plan, but this has been fantastic. Um, look for some more content from me. 
because one, I'm intrigued. Two, it's something I'm overly passionate about is is visualizing dashboard with dashboards, um, and look forward just to your metrics first collection in general. I'm I I just kind of do that. Plus, I've got all this gear I need to monitor now. Yeah. So look, there's also forward. dashboards and stuff for vSphere, for VMware, for uh, for some of the switching environment that I do. Like a lot of that stuff is going to get stood up. Yeah, you guys just beat to beat it to the punch today. So, <laughs> uh, is there a GitHub Discord integration, Harish? Yeah, absolutely. You can do webhooks directly to GitHub. You don't. There's not even really an integration. It's just a webhook. Well, Chris, Yan, thank you so much uh, for joining today. Um, maybe we could bring you guys back when you feel like the time is right. If you have big announcements or anything like that, we'd love to have you back on the show or sure. just do some uh, some announcements in Discord uh, anytime we anytime we have some new developments around that. But. Uh, any final thoughts for the users before we get out of here? Bring no? your feedback. Test it yeah. out. Yeah. You know, tell us anything you need. We're available. Yeah. Awesome. He's available. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, that's the beauty of Discord is you can post things and somebody will get around to it eventually, right? Yeah, that's been great. <laughs> yeah. Well, Chris, Ian, I'm going to excuse you guys. Let's close some, have some final closing thoughts. Thanks again for joining the show. I uh, appreciate it. And we'll see you guys back over in Discord. All right. Oh, right. Bye bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Take care. Well, guys, there you have it. Harvest and NA Box. Uh, I'll leave links in the description for the VOD in case you're watching this later. Um, but make sure you go and check out the projects, read through some of the docs, see if it'd be right for you. If you're using Prometheus and Grafana already to monitor certain things, this would be a very no nonsense, simple way for you to build in ONTAP and NetApp tools into a lot of that uh, functionality that you already have just for some simple open source monitoring. If you're using anything like uh, other than ONTAP, the, to, or sorry, if you're using Prometheus and Grafana to monitor other stuff, whether it's an application, whether it's your vSphere stack, all of those dashboards exist out there as well. So you can kind of, what I'm going to do is build a lot of this together and to, across NetApp, VMware, some of the Cisco networking stuff, who knows what else I could eventually add to it. And maybe we come back and we have a dashboard off one day. We, we, we bring in some pe top contributors of the community to see, to, to show off their biggest and bettest, best dashboards. And uh, we'll see if, uh, see if we can do that and get those contributed um, back to the community. But yeah, Harvest and NA Box, definitely go and check those out. Uh, they are free tools, open source, available on GitHub. Uh, you can find the links to them. I'll leave them in the description below for anybody watching. But Thanks for joining the show today, guys. Uh, I don't see any further questions coming out. Uh, just a reminder, we are on every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so make sure you subscribe, follow, do all the things, get the notifications, that kind of stuff. Come find me on TikTok. Come find my YouTube channel at Data Center Dude. All You'll find me everywhere. But until next time, my name is Nick Howell for Chris and Yan. Thank you guys very much for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week.